bust down to Aberdeen Proving Grounds in May of 91. Uh, it was a joint training a joint training base with the Marines, Air Force, some Navy, and the Army. I was connected to the 116th Ordnance Bravo Company under Captain Wallace. I had my, my senior drill sergeant was Senior Drill Sergeant Bridgewater. My drill sergeant was Drill Sergeant Menendez. I was a 63J10 chemical equipment supply operator, or was going to be trained to be one. I was scheduled to be there for no less than four months. Um, the training was 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. You had weekends off, like all AIT. They call it advanced individual training, and everybody's AIT is different. Upon arrival to my AIT, we were in what's called gateway for two weeks. We were, ha we were not allowed to wear any civilian clothes. We had to just wear military. We had to earn our way into the main building, the main barracks. Upon passing our chain of command tests and keeping our building clean, I graduated out of the gateway building into the main building. Um, I would say I was admired as a model soldier in those days. Um, I was Army National Guard, but the regular Army people and the Army National Guard trained together, it was indistinguishable. Who's who? There was Reserve, Regular Army, National Guard. Uh, so they, they were quite impressed with me as a soldier. I kept everything clean. I was, you know, very motivated, very friendly, very outgoing. And then there were, we were in bedrooms of three people at a time co-ed buildings but men and women were not allowed to share the same room in gateway it the first complaint came down when there were some soldiers that said that they were uh, waking up in the middle of the night with lights around my bed now at the time I was 19 years old and um, they had you know what's what's private Moss got going on here what's this around around his bed what's going on they reported it to Captain Wallace well drill sergeant Menendez who decided to keep it under her hat I was then, these soldiers then request to be in a separate room from me, in which case I was then transferred in Gateway to another room with two other soldiers who were not told why there was a transfer request. I went into the second room with these soldiers unaware of what's going on. Again, I'm just there to train. I'm going to be a soldier, you know, United States Army National Guard. If one day I wanted to go Army, Army regular Army at some point. Um, you know, everything seemed fine. Um, I got out of Gateway. I got into the main building with soldiers, and then it, the problems got worse. Then at this point, there was another, a third complaint, followed by a fourth and a fifth, and every time I, the soldiers would say, we don't want to be in the room with Private Moss. People were complaining of seeing large orbs around my bed at night, large white orbs uh, about the size of a medicine ball or a great big uh, bouncy ball, um, like you see on the beach. So nothing small, it was quite large. One soldier complained he thought he saw midgets or something running around my bed at night. And uh, it scared him. He said that they looked like they had elliptically long eyes. And he said they were running around my bed, glowing or dancing about. And then he thought he saw elephants, pink, like, like weird colored elephants standing on my bed. One stood up. It's like whatever it was that he woke up and saw, whatever the creature was, a small creature, uh, Private Bain and Private Kipworth. Kipworth said to me, it's like suddenly it became an elephant and it sat up on its hind legs and looked at him. So whatever it was, it changed shape and form into an elephant. And it scared him. And these are not... Kipworth and Bain were in their 20s, had been in the Army. This is their second training course they were going through. They were regular Army. They were muscly guys. They were not the kind to get scared. They had a lot of friends in the Green Berets. Uh, we had a Green Beret training with us. He was going through a third or fourth training course. And um, they needed a 63J they needed someone with that skill, so he was going through that training. He was in his 20s. Um, he had heard of things like this. He had, he had, he said, well, we're not allowed to talk about it. I kept getting reported, and at this point I was getting uncomfortable. Um, I met up with some people in the Air Force at this point. 
who told me, you're not going to talk about this, this meeting. This meeting didn't happen. You, you, you are being briefed. If you talk about this, it's in violation of the law. You're committing a federal offense. In fact, I'm doing so now. Um, they said, this girl, young girl spoke to me, and she said she was quite shaken. She said she was some kind of a psychic with the Air Force. And then she said that she had come to me in a something like a, a remote viewing or something. And I don't know what she's talking about. I think they're all crazy. I'm 19. I'm like, you're all putting me on. What's the matter with you? I don't see anything. Now, when she started talking to me, she said, they didn't like me coming to you. She was shaking pretty bad. And then somehow I know what she's talking about. And I said, look, they won't hurt you. Then the Air Force people got very irritated with me and said, no, no, don't, don't demonstrate knowledge like that to us. Don't talk like you know about this. You don't know what you're talking about. You shut up. And uh, it got back to my drill sergeant. And um, she, this meeting's over. He's not talking to you anymore. She said, no, the Air Force doesn't tell the Army to shut up. Get out of here. The captain stood up for me. My, cap, my, my company commander stood up for me. He says, get out of here. Get, leave him alone. Um, at this point, the whole company was taken out to a forest. And we were told to stand there. with It was a bunch of other companies. We were all in our PTs, our physical training outfit. Tennis shoes and it says our zip-ups. It said Army. And we were told to sing cadence. You know, the Army does those cadence. Oh, and we were there for like, God, over an hour. Shouting cadence in the forest. At this point, the drill sergeants told us all, before we got out there, don't look up at the top of the trees. If you look up, you get an Article 15. You'll be, you will be fined money. Well, some of us looked up, and something jumped out of the top of the trees and would grab them. Um, and one drill sergeant said to somebody else, that private's life is not going to change forever. I looked up at the top of the trees and I saw what looked like water or waves of energy at the top of the trees and there was a girl or a female it's like our cadence was causing some kind of an issue in the trees and she was right over my head and um, like, like she was caught in a current like she was drowning or she couldn't move but it was in the tops of the trees she was a short girl like she was coming from another dimension or something it's like we were we were thinning the veil. Was something was happening, and there were these people that came down that were in other kinds of uniforms. That they were, um, I got the impression they were more scientific. Then they looked at me and said, "That's the one." They were doing some kind of a test, and they said, "That's the one. That's the one." They looked at me. Um, we left the forest, and I met up with this other private. I won't disclose her name, and she started talking about her belief in fairies. Uh, at this point, her husband was a lieutenant, second lieutenant. I won't disclose his name. And um, so she started talking about fairies a lot with me. I'm going to ch uh, cut off here. I think this video is going to cut off. So we went to a McDonald's on, on site and talked about fairies. It was really weird. Um, crystals and fairies and other dimensions and things like that. And I said, well, I've always felt a connection to something like that growing up. Um, that's pretty much it in AIT. There may be a third video. There might be some more detail that come up. I don't know. I think that's pretty much it. Anyhow, some guy named Lindley, PFC Lindley, he was CIA. Something he wasn't supposed to admit, but he ended up saying anyways. And um, he was saying they want him out of the army. They want him out. They want him out. And I can't disclose those details. And that would be an issue. I can't talk about that. I was really reprimanded not to talk about that. Um, the nature of how I got out is undisclosed. Um, this this is something I really can't. I really can't talk about that. No, that one I can't go on about. Anyhow. Arperson, Illinois, United States Army Reserve, where all the paperwork for the soldiers is located. A few years later, I went to investigate my paperwork, and they said there was two files on me. One file said I got to Aberdeen Proving Grounds and graduated basic training in May of 91, and I got to Aberdeen to start my course. 
The second set of paperwork is sitting in the same same area, and it says Private Moss never completed basic training, and he stayed at Fort Dix, New Jersey, right up until, and it put me like August of '91, and then went back to Texas, like I was never in Aberdeen. And then the, the sergeant said, "This is very strange," and they investigated this, and she then said that somebody in uh, the Texas unit, the Army National Guard, falsified records. She, they didn't know where the records had been falsified. Now, I'm not supposed to talk about that either, uh, but there it is. And she said, you're under a, you can't talk about that. Uh, upon leaving AIT, I will tell you that Captain Wallace informed me verbally, and I signed a contract that says I will not disclose what happened at Aberdeen Proving Grounds. And she said, this is not going to be um, discussed. You don't discuss what happened here. Um... I mean, there's a lot I could go on about. I'm just giving you the highlights in this video. There's a whole lot more. There were people walking around me talking about aliens like they were as real as anything. I mean, very real. Very, very real. Uh, but not so much aliens from planets, but dimensions. Other dimensions. And this idea of fairies and other dimensions is very real. Very, very real. Um, we get into the 1992 experience about Benico, and it all falls into place at this point. It all falls into place. See, ten damn years this is the first I've ever talked about this, and I'm now going to be facing a federal prosecution for admitting something like this. I could I could get in a lot of trouble for saying this. Even if I take the video down, there's going to be someone's going to download download a copy. I can always say, well, uh, that was a private video. I was hacked. I mean, <laughs> this was a private video. <laughs> Cover myself legally. <laughs> If you have this video, you're not supposed to be seeing this. <laughs> Just... So, uh, <clears throat> not supposed to be public. <laughs> I'm not above or beyond the law. I'm not a criminal. But after 10 years, the bit the Benico story makes sense to nobody. Well, why'd they bring this alien girl to this guy in Texas, a 20-year-old? Um, <laughs> who was she? Where was she from? And there's all this issue of dimensions comes up, other dimensions. And I, I look, look, don't listen to me. Go to Bashar. Even Benico talked about Bashar. And J Darylenka is, I don't know him. I'm not trying to promote him. He's in Las Vegas. He channels Bashar. But he's real. She talked about him. So I would listen to what he says. I would defer you back to that for intelligence purposes. You want to learn anything, go see or listen to the videos of Bashar. Listen to Darylenka. Listen to him channeling Bashar. Uh, they're both on other planets in the future and this other dimension. So it's like, wh which one is it? It's all of the above. <laughs> um, it, it doesn't really make any difference. Um, it, it's really, 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 you have to get very fourth dimensional about this. This is going to cut off. Yeah. Um, it's like saying someone you love that died is gone, but they're not gone. That's a third dimensional thinking. Fourth dimensional thinking, they're, they're still there in the past. You still have them. So higher dimensions like fifth dimensional is, is really, really... Oh, that's where it gets really weird. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I know I've been a contactee or an experiencer all my life. And uh, it was like they were kicking off when I was in the Army. Or they didn't really... I don't know what it was. It was like they didn't really want me being... They didn't want me being them. It was kind of like they're going to make sure there's enough... Raise enough noise that the humans in the army get the idea. He's really not one of ours. He's not ours. Uh, he's not even, you know, anyone here. Um, it's like what's ours is ours, yours is yours. Uh, it's kind of like he's our family, not yours. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Now I'm really getting scared. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't have a lot of subscribers. I don't know who's watching. I don't think it's going to be an issue. I, if I had thousands of subscribers, I probably wouldn't put this video 